going to this Barack Obama story. Because yesterday, I was just minding my own business, and I actually, I was looking on social media, and I said, what? And I thought to myself, I said, Barack Obama visits Prime Minister, the UK Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. And I said to myself, now why is former President Barack Obama visiting the Prime Minister of the UK? What he has to talk to him about. Let's go ahead and see that clip here when he was first cited on Downing Street. Get a load of this one. Now, let's return to those events in Downing Street that we showed you about an hour or so ago because uh, President Obama, or former President Obama, there at number 10 in the last hour. He's just emerged in the last couple of minutes. Just want to show you those pictures. Uh, it wasn't the longest of meetings, perhaps about 30, 40 minutes, but uh, there President Obama just trying to find his car initially. But uh, as he wanders over, let me just put the sound up and... Here, just a little of what the reporters are shouting. Do you have a few, few moments? Did you discuss Gaza? <laughs> Come and have a chat with us for a minute. <laughs> How did it go? What did you talk about? Well, he's finally found uh, the car and uh, avoiding all of those questions. Uh, we were talking to Helen Catt a little earlier and uh, a certain amount of surprise amongst the political reporters there suddenly seeing uh, the former American president uh, arriving there at Downing Street. But no word about what exactly was discussed in that meeting if we hear. So this was the part that was pretty interesting to me, right? I don't know if you got to hear Obama. His voice was a little bit low when he was walking towards the car, uh, but they were asking him, did you talk to him about Gaza? And he was like, he said, I'm so tempted to talk to, I guess he was trying to tell the media he was tempted to come over to them and talk to them, but obviously he did not do that. Uh, it's really interesting. They were not expecting Barack Obama to be there. And the press kind of sits outside of, outside of a Downing Street actually outside of the prime minister's house. From what I understand, they usually are kind of propped up there just waiting for speeches and all that jazz. So no, they were not expecting him. And there's something else that was a little bit odd too. Uh, in this video, it's actually revealed, you know, you would think that if Barack Obama just decided to show up uh, which we'll get into that in just a second, you would think that this is someone that he knows. He's met the prime minister of the UK before. Not so fast. Apparently he has not. Listen to this one. I'm telling you, they were, yesterday, the UK was all like, what? Tomorrow, am I right to describe it as a secret meeting? We had no idea this was happening, did we? I think it's being described as a private meeting, but certainly unexpected to see uh, the former US president show up at Downing Street. Uh, we're told it's a courtesy call while he's in town for work to do with his foundation and decided to drop in on the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. And I'm told that the two of them have not met before. So this is their first meeting and it is a- Pause. Everybody catch that? They never met before. This was his first time meeting Rishi Sunak. Now, Barack Obama was apparently there to support his foundation. He was there for the Obama Foundation. And this will, we'll get into this when we talk about the Logan Act, because some people are saying that what Barack Obama did actually violates the Logan Act. Not necessarily, we'll get into that. But what is strange is that he just decided while he was there for the Obama Foundation that he would stop by and, you know, have a little chat with the prime minister that he never met before. You know, it's just like if I'm in your city to attend an event and I just happened to stop by your house and we never met. It just seemed a little bit odd. But I'll tell you what I think they talked about. A private informal chat a uh, source tells me so we may not be given a readout of it but you can imagine they might touch on uh, the um, you know the the global picture and instability in lots of different parts of the world but uh, mr obama uh, smiled and waved to the cameras as he stopped outside at number 10 just after three o'clock and i was trying to think about when he was last at downing street and certainly the most memorable time was when he 
uh, came in 2016 during the EU referendum and uh, appeared at a press conference with David Cameron saying that uh, if Britain voted for Brexit, we'd be at the back of the queue in terms of a US trade deal. So not sure if the trade deal will focus in their discussions, but certainly uh, not much uh, has come to fruition on that in the last few years. But Mr. Obama, who of course left the White House in 2017, uh, may be uh, discussing uh, maybe discussing the Conservative Party's current situation uh, with Rishi Sunak, uh, but it's being described as an informal chat uh, between the two of them. I'm told that Lord Cameron, the Foreign Secretary, is not uh, present, and it uh, seems that there'll be plenty of, of them to, for them to talk about in terms of uh, global issues, but it's unlikely we'll be given a full readout of that meeting because it's being described as a private meeting. It was described as a private meeting. Now, Ancient says you think Obama is telling him to step down. I'm going to, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, Ancient. Hold on. We're coming. The Guardian went into a little bit more detail about Barack Obama's visit. Barack Obama drops in on Rishi Sunak on London trip. So it goes on to say Barack Obama has held talks with Rishi Sunak as the former U.S. president paid a courtesy visit to Downing Street during a trip to London. The pair are understood to have discussed a range of subjects during an hour long meeting, including one of the prime minister's favorite topics, artificial intelligence. Well, well, well. Obama, who served two terms in the White House, 2009, 2017, before he was succeeded by Donald Trump was in London as part of work with his Obama Foundation, which oversees a scholarship program and other initiatives. The prime minister's official spokesperson said Obama had made an informal courtesy drop in as part of his trip to London. And as I said before, how do you drop in to see someone that you never met before? Right. Uh, and I want to highlight this part as well. The two held what were understood to be largely one-to-one -one discussions in the prime minister's study. Obama briefly paused at the door of number 10 to wave to the cameras, but no photos were released from what Downing Street said was a private meeting. So let's get into what I think is happening here. So again, I said to myself, why is the former president meeting with the prime minister of UK and they've never met before. What, what would he have to chat with him about? Margaret Kimberly, I think hit the nail on the head. She was responding to me. <laughs> and Margaret Kimberly said, um, they're in a jam with Ukraine failure scared because of Galloway's victory. And the Tories are headed to defeat in the next election. And we're going to break down those uh, bit by bit here. And I actually want to start off with the Tories. So the Tories is the conservative party in the UK. And that is Rishi Sunak's party. He's a part of that party and he doesn't seem to have a favorable uh, following right now. So there is a lot of rumblings about the Tory party in the UK actually not doing too well, or they may get stomped in the election. But then there's also this issue with the election because uh, Rishi Sunak is actually trying to change the date of that. So we're going to get into this clip here from Sky News. The Tory party is in shambles. I mean, first of all, Sam, what's happened? This is a significant breaking development from the prime minister. Um, for the last few days, I have to say, Adam, there has been something close in parts of the Conservative Party to flat out panic about the performance of the Prime Minister, where the Conservatives are going, the fact they're 26 points behind in some polls. And pressure has been building on, uh, has been bad, uh, pressure has been growing on the Prime Minister uh, to call an early election. It's one of the solutions, one of the ways out uh, of the situation that the Conservatives are finding themselves in. Uh, he has in the last half an hour, clarified that that's not going to happen. Let's hear from him. In several weeks' time, we've got elections for police and crime yeah. commissioners, for local councils, for mayors across yeah. the country. They're important elections. And not that's a general what, election. That's what I'm focused on. There won't be a general election on that day. Yeah. But when there is a general election, what matters is the choice. So Rishi Sunak, you should know, also uh, very corporate, just FYI, corporate establishment shill. 
So that's Rishi Sunak ruling out May the 2nd. But now what, Sam? It's a good question. The reason that pressure was growing on May the 2nd is that Tory MPs felt it was becoming unsustainable. They thought that Rishi Sunak has not much left in the tank, according to one uh, person he appointed to his cabinet. Uh, they worry that the summer will look terrible uh, with small bite numbers increasing. There's little sign of economic good, ne good news. There's not a lot that this government is doing. Uh, and that's why maybe they thought putting an end to it sooner rather than later uh, was a good idea. He has ruled out just one date, May the 2nd, the date that the local council uh, and local mayors were up for election. Uh, he says, he said on ITV West Country that that won't happen. But uh, to be honest, there could be an election at any point all the way up to January of next year. So when will it be? Rishi Sunak has always said that his preference, uh, his presumed intention is for the second half of this year. That's led us to think that maybe a date in October or November will be the right one. In October, it means that party conferences would be cancelled in November. Uh, it, it ends up being quite close to the US presidential election. There are problems, advantages and disadvantages with all the dates. The question for me, Adam, is just how long can things go on as they are if they don't improve for the Prime Minister? The pressure is becoming immense. Inside number 10, they know that they're losing the support of MPs. What happens if half the councillors, for instance, are lost for the Conservative Party? Rishi is trying to stall. Rishi is trying to stall. He knows things are not looking good for the Tories and things are not looking good for him either. Remember, he was not elected. So there's concern there as well. There's another clip here from Sky News uh, where Labour is actually asking, what is Richie Sunak afraid of? And again, this is what I think had to do with that meeting that Barack Obama had with Richie Sunak. I don't think it was just like stopping by and saying, hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. I think they had a lot of things to talk about. Uh, and part of it could be what's happening to the Tories, what's happening to uh, Rishi Sunak, George Galloway's win. There's so much more. And Ukraine, of course, is in shambles. Now it's time to speak to Labour about the day's political stories. I'm joined uh, this morning by the Deputy National Campaign Coordinator, uh, Ellie Reeves. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Um, so uh, the Prime Minister says the election won't be May the 2nd. Uh, what do you make of that? No big surprise, really. Well, you know, we've had 14 years of Conservative government. And I think people rightly want a general election. I think you should get on and call it for the 2nd of May. That would be the right time to have an election in the electoral cycle. We've got local elections and mayoral elections on that day. Uh, and you know, I think the public should be able to, to go to the polls and uh, vote in a general election on the same day. It's the Prime Minister's prerogative. He can choose when it's best for him to choose it. Well, he's got until the 26th of March to call uh, an election for the 2nd of May. You know, what's he running scared of? Get on, and, get on and call it so people can vote for change. Well, he would say he's not running scared. <laughs> He'd always managed expectations and suggested it would be in the second half of the year. And you weren't really expecting a May election anyway, were you? I mean, if, if you look at the access talks that Labour has got underway now with civil servants, which always happens uh, with any party that, that might win an election, that, that only happened at the beginning of this year. That's pretty late. You can't really be expecting a May election. Well, we're prepared for a May election. And uh, until the 26th of March, the last day that Parliament can be dissolved from our election, then we'll be ready for it. You know, Rishi Sunak, he's squatting in Downing Street. He's an unelected Prime Minister. And, yep. you know, people up and down the country, we saw in the by-elections in Wellingborough, in Kingswood, Tamworth, Mid-Bedfordshire, that there is an appetite for change. And I think it's right that people are able to go to the polls on a general election. So we are ready. Uh, we would fight for every vote in a general uh, election. But, you know, after 14 years of failure, I, I do think people should be allowed to have their say. OK. <laughs> I love the way she, she said that. <laughs> After 14 years of failure, people should be allowed to have their their uh, their say. So yeah, he's trying to find a way uh, to delay this. Now we get to the George Galloway piece. Now remember, George Galloway's win was a big deal. Obviously, Prime Minister, Prime Minister Rishi did not like the fact that George Galloway won. He was not supposed to win, according to uh, Rishi Sunak. And it actually says something about where the people stand. Because again, remember, not like they voted for Rishi, but it tells you the direction that the country is moving in. And he doesn't like that. That scares him. Remember, George Galloway 
is, uh, you know, pro Palestinian supporter. He's been very vocal about that. He also hosts Motes TV. So he's anti imperialist. He's anti war. And Rishi Sunak, again, is another corporate shill. He's a rich, rich man. Uh, and he supports the military industrial complex. So after George Galloway won, remember, this is something that Rishi said. Uh, to show you just how upset he was that George Galloway won. <laughs> in recent weeks and months, we have seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. What started as protests on our streets has descended into intimidation, threats, and planned acts of violence. Jewish children fearful to wear their school uniform, lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. And it is beyond alarming that last night the Rochdale by-election returned a candidate who dismisses the horror of what happened on October the 7th, who glorifies Hezbollah and is endorsed by Nick Griffin, the racist former leader of the BNP. Lie after lie after lie about George Galloway. Again, going back to October 7, when a lot of those stories that were reported about October 7th have been debunked multiple times. This guy is a puppet. Yes, you can march and protest with passion. You can demand the protection of civilian life. But no, you cannot call for violent jihad. You can freely criticize the actions of this government or indeed any government. That is a fundamental democratic right. But no, you cannot use that as an excuse to call for the eradication of a state or any kind of hatred or anti-Semitism. It's not anti-Semitism. See, here we go again. What I tell you, what I tell you, he's a part of that Zionist machine, right? Again, let's remember what they say in reference to international law, what it says. It says that occupied people have a right to resist. They also have a right to armed resistance. That's international law. I didn't write the law but it's there. We're going to do call in tonight after the show because, oh man, this is a doozy. This week, I've met with senior police officers and made clear it is the public's expectation that they will not merely manage these protests, but police them. And I say this to the police, we will back you when you take action. And he is pro police state. So you see, these are the people that they want in office, you guys, not just in the United States, but also when it comes to other Western countries as well. Let me show you how base George Galloway was in reference to this, because Rishi sees someone like George Galloway as a threat. George Galloway says, I warned 10 Downing Street, we will fight any plan to conscript our young people to fight Joe Biden or Donald Trump's wars. Russia is not our enemy. China is not our enemy. Your government and the economic system it represents are our enemy. I promise you the mother of all battles against this hashtag, uh, hashtag no conscription uh, at no NATO, no to war. See, we could never get someone in Congress that's a member of the squad or honestly, even the Freedom Caucus. We can't get anyone in Congress to say this because our politicians are too afraid of the Israeli lobby. George Galloway is not afraid. And that is what worries Rishi Sunak. And I also feel like this is what worries Barack Obama. And I'm pretty sure in that conversation that they had where he just dropped in, they probably talked about this too. The fact that someone who's pro-Palestinian won. Now, people are saying that Barack Obama's visit is a violation of the Logan Act. Not necessarily. And I want to get into this and I'll explain to you why as well. Uh, Linez says the Logan Act, really? She says MAGAs are so stupid. Clearly, Obama let President Biden know he was going to the UK for his foundation. If it was for the US, President Biden has the power to authorize whoever he wants to negotiate, unlike Trump, who isn't POTUS and just met with Orban. So she pointed out what Trump just did recently. So the Logan Act. The Logan Act is a U.S. federal law that criminalizes negotiation by unauthorized American citizens with foreign governments having a dispute with the United States. The intent behind the act is to prevent unauthorized negotiations from undermining the government's position. It was originally established in 1799. 
The long title is an act for the punishment of certain crimes therein specified. So what I want to say is, remember the purpose of the trip. Barack Obama said his purpose of the trip was for the Obama Foundation, right? So when he just happened to stop by to see uh, the prime minister while he was there, but he probably, Biden probably already knew he was going to make this trip anyway. Uh, so they're probably already approval. But what this does allude to, which many people have been wondering and have questioned, who is really running things up in this piece, right? Many people have made the claims that they think Barack Obama is really the one that's pulling the strings and that's making decisions because Obama, or excuse me, Joe Biden is not, uh, is not all there. <laughs> it's not all there right now, right? So he's dealing with mental uh, decline. So this leads back to what people have been saying about, oh, Barack Obama has been pulling the strings all this time, which could still very much be true. I don't know. But it is still just weird to me. And I believe those are the reasons why he decided to, to drop by. Remember, George Galloway's win is a step towards progress. It's a win for the left. It's a win for the pro-Palestinian movement. And what did I tell you about Barack Obama? Every time there's some progress being made, Barack Obama shows up to try to stop it. He did that with the NBA strike. He did that with Black Lives Matter. Every time. I, I can't think of a time when he didn't show up and say, all right, everybody. Uh, I think we need to go home. I, I can't think of a time. And now he just happens to be at the prime minister's house for a chat to chat with someone that he has never met. Coincidence? I think not.